your business it's really founded on your community, which you call the roommates. Mm -hmm. Most of your content is coming in directly from your roommates. Is that correct? Yeah, so it's like a forest bias type of situation where the roommates are controlling the content. And so that was something I had to learn. Even naming them the roommates was something I had to learn. Um, because you further mobilize a community when you give them a, a name that they can unify under. Like when you think of Black Lives Matter movement, it's, we have this name now that we can all push forward and, you know, this movement that we can push forward. And so once you give, once you name your audience or give them an identity to where they can relate to each other, like I'm a roommate, you're a roommate, like we're roommates. Okay, good. And once you give them that, 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 uh, what is it? Ownership, right? Mm -hmm. They begin to, the community begins to grow. And so that's what we saw with the shade room. We were giving them, I told them early on, they, because I used to be the writer on the blog, and then when when it was when it was a blog, we definitely transformed into a media company. But when we were when it was just a blog, um, I was the writer, and the audience at one point told me to get off the blog. They didn't want to hear my opinions. They didn't agree with me all the way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Whatever. They didn't like my voice there. And I had to, uh, an option at that point. I could have continued on not listening to my audience, and I would have died out. Or step back and get off the platform. And that's what I did. And my audience appreciated that. And since then, they've appreciated that they have rights to the platform. If they don't want certain articles up, I'll take it down. If they don't think something is their voice, they'll, I will take it down. We only report what they want to see. You know what I mean? And that's that, what it is. And so I think that um, that all comes from listening and talking and being engaged with the audience. Mm -hmm. Now... You have millions and millions. It, it, correct me if I'm wrong. I know that you are the number one media black media company in the world on in, on, on social. Is mm -hmm. it? If because I can't think of another. World Star is so last year. Uh huh. Just to get put it into perspective, Instagram last year in 2019 was the most in, uh, was the platform with the most engagement in the world. Mm -hmm. So even though Facebook had more users, Instagram users engage with each other more with the platform more than any other platform in the world, right? And the number one engaged account was World Star Hip Hop, which is uh, I don't know if it's a fully black audience, but I and I don't know if it's black owned anymore, but I know that it's a of the hip hop you know kind of you know news. Um, and then the Shade Room was number three, and. Nine Gag, which is a white uh, media company, was number two, and so I think that um, we were the third most engaged account. And I want to see what we are this year. I'm thinking, you know, it might have gone up, but <laughs> like that's what. Uh, Do those other do they have more followers than you? Uh, World Star. Yeah, they do actually. They do have more followers for sure. I, th I thought you guys were number one. So I correct myself. I stand correct. Well, we're, well, we're the number one black owned, I would say. We're the number one black owned. Well, sorry, I don't know if they're black owned. Speaking about yeah. listening to your um, audience, I love that mm -hmm. you said that. You step out, but your writers, they're celebrities themselves. They, they are really front and center. Like, your writers are just as much of celebrities in some right as as the the stars that they report on did that come by accident or is that just something that you know once you stepped out you were like you guys step in yeah that's what happened they wanted me to step out so when i stepped out um i brought up new voices right and so those were the voices they felt more comfortable with they liked hearing for, uh, from other black women I brought in black my, my writers are all black um, women and so I brought you know because I mean I feel like that's what it should be I mean uh, our audience is black women mainly um, but I brought their black women from the south black women from the east coast black women from the west coast you know what I mean <laughs> you know what I mean from uh, the UK and all other places and so I was able to bring in these different voices and the black women and the audience can now connect with these different types of voices that they feel. Cause then black women are not a monolith, neither are black people. Right. And so they all have different kinds of interests and I brought them in and yes, they become, uh, I wouldn't say they're influencers because the people follow them now. You know what I mean? So, right. you know, I've noticed that the writers will come, and I and I and I did expose their name um, for a purpose because they need to be credited for their work, but also because 
it gives them a responsibility. Mm-hmm. The roommates go to their DMs personally and they'll be like, this is how I feel about the article that you wrote today. You know what I mean? Like they really are, they really, you, you see the thing is our roommates come to the shade room 30 times a day. And if I can ask you, yeah, on average, they come 30 times a day because we post 50 to 70 times a day. So they know we have, we've shown them that if they keep coming back, they're going to get new content. You know what I mean? And so th- it's in their habit to look at a post and say, okay, let me come back to look at the comments later or let me come back to, you know, later and I know there'll be two or three more posts. So that's another thing when it comes to business is that consistency, letting your audience know that they can reach you anytime, all the time, that you're present all the time, allows them to integrate you into their daily habits. And yeah, on average, they come to our page 30 times a day. That means some people come more than 30 times a day um, to the shade room. And so um, for me, like, I forgot what I was saying, but I hope I answered the question. People are really looking at y'all like you are their CNN. You are their trusted news outlet. And you spoke about having a responsibility to your audience. Yes. Talk to me about the vetting process, because I got to imagine you guys have millions and millions of people hitting you with, you know, very exclusive content. Is there some content that you won't share? What does that vetting process look like before anything goes live? Well, yeah, um, you know, and the crazy thing is I've had to learn that along the way. I, I was not in media, nor did I go to school for journalism or media. So I was thrust into an industry that I knew nothing about, had no prior, um, you know, experience with. And so it was like building a plane while flying in the sense that I had to make some mistakes. There were times when we got sued. Um, we got sued by Michael Blackson. <laughs> you know what I mean? One time because uh, one of, you know, my writers at the time had posted um, – a sex tape. This was around the time when, not a sex tape, it was like a, a sex, you know, something that exposed one of his private parts or whatever. And so, um, you know, one learning about... Private parts? How many, huh? One of his private parts? How many does he have? I mean, well, you know what I mean? It's, it's supposed, okay. it, he, was, he, he was having an affair of some sort. Or whatever, but but it, it, basically, it was, it was an accident, though. It was not meant to be shown. Um, and so it was meant, the video was meant to be cut off. The wrong video was posted. It's just a long thing that happened. But I had to answer to that. It was during the time that Gawker had gotten shut down. Um, so I think for me, over time, I've learned the responsibility of the platform. Because when it started off small, it, it wasn't until we had this huge black audience that I realized, oh, my God you know, the, the responsibility is not just to be a good media company, but to be one that black people feel represents them well. You know what I mean? And so that's a constant conversation of whether the shade room is good for the community. You know what I mean? Yep. I definitely can argue that it's great for the community because I think it's a great, any black media is great for the community. One, because we, we need to have spaces where we can tell our story through our own lenses and perspectives. But, um, but the things that have happened because like we've helped to build businesses and we've helped to, you know, um, LM, LM, LMI, I'm sorry. Um, she has credited us to help it with her career because we posted, um, she was kind of discovered on the shade room. Right. And now she's a Grammy award winning, you know, amazing artist. And so I think, um, a lot of good has come from the shade room. Uh, but I've had to learn what this platform is, what my purpose was, why I'm here, all while building it. You know what I mean? And so my perspective on business is, and, and, and what you do in life is, is not about how to become successful or how to be a billionaire. I know a lot of people want to be billionaires now. You know what I mean? And that's this, this talk about it or how to be a millionaire. To me, it's more so what is the purpose that you were called for? Because I feel like, favor isn't fair and if you're in your purpose it's really easy it's not easy in the sense that you won't work you're gonna work but you're gonna have a natural and innate anointing on whatever it is that you do that people are gonna wonder how are you doing it you know what I mean? and yep. how are you sustaining it how how are you so talented in this and it really comes from the fact that that was who you were born to be. And so I think when it comes to entrepreneurship, if you feel innately that you are entre- an entrepreneur, I knew it. I knew that I was supposed to be an entrepreneur slash writer because these were the things that were showing up in my past. 
What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.